What's going on? This is Johnny from the Hangout Spot and Florida correspondent for the Boxing Voice, and I am here with Puerto Rican sensation, one of the best fighters in the 168-pound division, Bushwick, Brooklyn's own, which is my hometown, the chosen one, Edgar Belanga. My brother, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Say it loud and proud, champ. Hello. That's what's up, man. I'm here with the chosen one, Edgar Belanga, man. What's going on, champ, man? What brings you here to Orlando Boxing Club today? Um, so we here, you know, I got my brother fighting pretty boy Pablo. Um, you know, Pablo Pretty Boy Valdez. He's fighting this Saturday at the Osceola uh, Arena um, in Kissimmee. Um, you know, so we over here, you know, every time he fights or I fight, you know, we give away free tickets to the kids and we came out to Orlando Boxing Club to give them them free tickets, you know, so they go go support us, man, this weekend. I hear that. How you that? And how excited are you to see Pablo fight and what are you expecting to see that night? Well, him is always, you know, that's my brother, so, you know, I get more nervous, you know, getting ready to watch him fight than my fights. You know, my fights, I'll be zoned in, I'll be ready to go with him. My stomach be twirling, I'll be having to do some diarrhea and stuff, you know, I'll be shitting on myself sometimes. I'll be scared, you know, not because I think he's going to lose, just because, you know, you know how boxing is, bro, it's just nerve-wracking. But, uh, you know, from him, I'm expecting fireworks this weekend, you know, I'm, I'm expecting a knockout. Um, I'm expecting him to go out there and do what he do best, you know what I'm saying? Catch that knockout, look good, you know, excite the fans and, you know, come home with the win. I hear that, man. Speaking of mega fights, man, you are coming off a big one, man, against arguably the face of boxing, Canelo Alvarez, man. And I just want to congratulate you on your performance, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. Because let me tell you something. You know the deal. There was a lot of people hating on that fight, yeah. talking about, you know, it wasn't going to be competitive and he was going to knock you out. And that didn't happen. And I knew that wasn't going to happen yeah. because I knew you weren't going to lay down. You were going to fight hard. And you faced some adversity in that fight as well. Yeah. But uh, talk to me about that experience fighting on that stage. And what did you take out of that experience? Um, now, I consider myself, besides Canelo being at 168, I'm the guy at 168 now. You know what I'm saying? I'm the top dog. You know, I'm the guy that everybody want. And, uh, you know, he knows it. He knows that that night he passed the torch to me. You know, it, it's about that time where he's about to head out, you know, and I still want to run it back with him. You know what I'm saying? I'm God willing, you know, we can run it back next year. I think it's going to be a massive fight. You know, the rematch is going to be even more crazy, you know, because everybody is going to expect something amazing, something big. You know, that experience with him was, is something that I needed. You know what I'm saying? I needed to face a guy like him to take me to that level. Um, you know, it was a great fight, man. You know, I know that we went toe-to-toe -to -toe for 12 rounds. You know what I'm saying? And nobody's doing that with that guy. You know, nobody's standing there. I was talking shit to him in the ring, round by round you know, disrespecting him, you know, and just fighting, man, and just going in there. That's why he gave me that type of respect. You know, I went in there, I let my balls hang, and, you know, I went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. Um, but I feel like, you know, that rematch is going to be something different. You know, I feel like the second half of the fight, I started getting comfortable. You know, I started playing around, I started dancing. I started, you know, being myself. And I feel like the second fight, if we do, that does come to show, come to play, I feel like it's going to be a different outcome. That was actually going to be my question. What would you do differently in a rematch? Um, rematch, I'm gonna take it to him from the first round. You know, there's gonna be no way in. It's not gonna be me going back. I feel like I was going back a lot. You know, I was trying to like get him tired. You know, try to do the rope a dope a little bit. You know, you know, Muhammad Ali did the George Foreman. Um, you know, but I was just, I didn't even know I was in the 12th round. Like, I was just so locked in and enjoying the fight that my coach in the 12th round was like, yo, we in the 12th. Like, you gotta pick it up. I was like, fuck, you know, but um, I see myself. The second fight, I see myself taking it to him. You know, I already took his best shot. He can't hurt me. He can't do nothing with me. You know what I'm saying? It's just about me. Now I got to go in there and I got to put that pain on him. You know what I'm saying? I took his best, you feel me? And he still haven't got my best yet, you know? And I feel like that second fight is going to be something good. No, I agree. I agree, man. You took his best shots. And you brought something up because anybody that knows boxing knows that he kind of took it easy on Mungia, but he didn't take it easy on you, man. And that's why you get more respect, bro, because you caught the best Canelo. I caught, I caught the best Canelo. I caught the guy that he wanted to take my head off. He didn't have sympathy for, for the way he did with Mungia or Charlo or any of those guys. You know what I'm saying? He was nice to them. For me, he came to fight, and that's what I wanted. You know, I didn't want to. I didn't want to get a half-assed Canelo. I wanted to get the full Canelo. I wanted to, like they were saying, poke that bear. I'm a bear too, and y'all seen it. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to poke that bear because I'm a bear. You know, so that's what happened. And you know, I caught the best of him that night. You know what I'm saying? And it was an amazing fight. Now nah, you prove a point. You prove that you definitely belong on that level. So again, congratulations on that performance. But champ, are you the new face of Puerto Rican boxing? Absolutely, absolutely. I feel like there's nobody right now that's doing what I'm doing, the numbers that I'm doing, you know, 
listen, man, there's nobody that's exciting that they want to go see, you know, whether or not they hate me or they love me. They gonna still watch me, you know. I'm right now. I'm, I'm arguably the talk of the town right now. You know, I'm. When you mention Puerto Rico, you're gonna mention my name, Belanga. You know, and I feel like right now, I'm the only one right now that's really putting on. You know, what I'm saying these guys are not fighting big fights. These these guys are not fighting mega fights unless they on the, on the un, uh, unless they under uh, undercard. You know, and with me, every fight from now on is gonna be a mega fight. You know, I'm gonna bring the hype. I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring that thing that boxing needed. You know, what Trinidad had. You know that 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 stardom, you know what I'm saying, that humbleness and that bringing the, the people together, you know, that fight, I brought everybody together, man, you don't understand, I brought the whole Puerto Rico together that night, I brought literally the whole New York together that night, you know, and that's 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 right there, that's that's on the road to becoming a legend. No, absolutely, absolutely, and speaking of uh, Mexico against Puerto Rico, it doesn't get any bigger than that, and you're absolutely right, man, that was a, that was a show, yeah. that was that was an event. You know, that was an event, you know, he had... One of the one of the best Mexican artists walking him out. I had Lua La L, I had a Kanghe, I had Fat Joe Fat walking Joe. me out. Lunai was there, Shout you know. Out to crack. Yeah, crack, you know what I'm saying? Like I had TS in the building, like come on bro, like that like I said before, that wasn't a fight, that was a concert, you know what I'm saying? It was a whole bunch of Mexican women, beautiful women, beautiful girls, beautiful you know, beautiful people, guys out there that was just, you know, dressing up. You know, and it was a concert, man, and I was just happy the way it played out. You know, we went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. It wasn't a boring fight. You know, usually in the 12th round, you see people leaving the arena. Nobody left the arena. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's still there. No, absolutely. Speaking of Puerto Rico, there's rumors that you're probably going to fight your next fight in Puerto Rico some point in the first quarter of 2025. Are there any truth to those rumors? Uh, absolutely. You know, my, my first fight back 2025 is going to be in Puerto Rico. It's 100% happening. Um, we're looking at the Choli sale. So it's going to be it's going to be some amazing, man. You know, I, it's only right to come back to the island and give them a fight. You know, I came to Florida. You know, I came out here to Kissimmee. I fought in Kissimmee already. I fought in Orlando. I fought in New York. And it's only right to come out to the island, you know, to my island where I live now currently, you know, and go out there and just, you know, show, put on a show for my people. I hear that, man. I can't wait to see that. Any any, any rumors on potential opponents? Anybody that you guys are looking at? Uh, a couple people, you know, but right now we, we're trying to add the IBF, you know, William Skull. I want to get that title shot. You know, I want to take his title. I want to fuck him up and just beat his ass, you know, in Puerto Rico. You know, I want to fuck him up. You know, he was talking shit. I already seen him talk a little shit. I'm gonna fuck him up in front of my people. And, oh, we got that puñeta, estamos aquí, ya tú sabes. Let them know. I, well, that was gonna be my yeah, last question. I was like, Edgar, you gotta let them know, yeah, bro. No. In Spanish. Si, sí, no, estamos aquí, estamos aquí 100% representando Puerto Rico hasta la muerte. You know, and, and that's what we're here for, you know, para poner la bandera arriba, en alto, como siempre, todo mi pelea. Y como, como yo hice siempre, yo. Si yo puedo morir en ese ring para, para Puerto Rico, yo voy a hacer eso. Y ya, that's it. If you could play matchmaker or promoter, who would be your next three dream opponents? Um, I'll do I, my next three. I'll be Canelo rematch. It'll be Munguia and Charlo. What about Caleb Plant? Because he's talking a lot of, he's talking four, a lot of smack. Four, if you throw four in there, Caleb Let's Plant. throw five. Five, all right, so. <laughs> For Caleb Plant and the last one, uh, Jake Paul. <laughs> oh, you pulled that one out of left field, champ. <laughs> you pulled that one out of left field, man. One more, one more. Since we're talking about Puerto Rico, man, our home country, man. What's your five favorite Puerto Rican fighters was fighters of all time? Um, my, I mean, I'm gonna be honest. I only got one. You know, like that I actually looked up to and that I love. You know what I'm saying? It's Ciro Trinidad. You know, but if you mention, I guess I could give you like top four. I feel like it's Trinidad, me, you know, Trinidad, uh, Miguel Cotto, um, Macho Camacho, and me. That's what's up, man. Legendary list, man. But man, let me tell you something. This was awesome. And I appreciate the time, champ. You know, I'm a big fan. I'm always going to be a supporter of yours. And I can't wait to see your next fight. I'm probably going to pull up in Puerto Rico for that one. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a movie, man. That, that. That fight is gonna be something crazy. I think this one, you know, Canelo was big, you know what I'm saying, don't get me wrong, but now I'm in my island, so it's gonna, we're gonna make this shit, we're gonna make sure 100% it's gonna be like a concert, movie style, knockout, big win, and if we fight for the title, we taking home the title, you know, and we're gonna do it in the house.
Our hometown Bushwick, baby. They, they're always rooting for you, man. Let them know how you feel about them. Bushwick, man. I love Bushwick, man. Brooklyn, that's born and, born and raised. You know, I was born in White Cove Hospital, man. And, yes. You know, so I'm... Listen, I have so much history in Brooklyn. It's crazy, you know, and I love my people in Bushwick, man. Brooklyn, you know, I fight for them all the time. You know, when I go back, I'm like a king. You know what I'm saying? I go to every block in Bushwick, Knickerbocker, Wilson, Myrtle, Broadway, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I'm there. People love me, man. So, you know, I, I'm always continue to fight for them. Champ, I appreciate the time. Can't wait to see you perform again. I am here again with Puerto Rican sensation, the face of Puerto Rican boxing, the chosen one, Edgar Belanga. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I love you guys. Thank you. Thank you for watching that video and make sure you like, share, and subscribe to The Hangout Spot on YouTube and help us get to that 1,000 subscriber mark. And make sure you head to the page and check out all of our live fight coverage, live interviews, fighters, trainers. We got it all. You already know how we do it up here at The Hangout Spot. So tell a friend to tell a friend and make sure you come and support the movement. I definitely appreciate all of y'all.